Hi everyone, so this really is a big lesson now where we do a deep dive into the evaluative strands on aims of firms or objectives of the firms. If you get an essay on this after this lesson and the last one that you've just watched, you will be able to crush any essay, I promise. Okay, let's have a look. Right, number one, who truly controls the firm and therefore determines the objectives? So just today, May 2018, Elon Musk has declared another record loss for Tesla, but remains so focused on the long-term growth maximization of Tesla. He clearly is in a very dominant position within the company and retains a huge amount of control. That helps to actually uh, mitigate the principal agent problem that we saw in uh, last lesson where there can be a pursuit of profit satisfying. Uh, so that's an interesting example. Compare that with uh, the banks in the run-up to the 2008 global financial crisis where it was all about short-term profit maximization. It was about taking speculative risks, uh, borrowing lots to re-lend into all sorts of uh, dodgy investments, okay, uh, which uh, was taking on more and more risk, which clearly the shareholders would not have been happy with. And of course, many shareholders uh, really did lose huge amounts of money in that financial crisis, okay, a massive principal agent problem there. So who really is control and therefore who determines the objectives. Okay, secondly, what impact do the objectives actually have on efficiencies? So we've seen that uh, profit maximization uh, potentially allows for that pursuit of uh, dynamic efficiency and using those profits uh, to really improve the business offering in the future uh, and improve customer satisfaction in the future. Uh, so that's an interesting one. The other objectives, you could certainly consider the actual increase in consumer surplus, the increase in producer surplus that may be apparent uh, in pursuing those other objectives. Of course, you're going to offer lower prices uh, to consumers if you're pursuing sales maximization, uh, and that may be helpful for them. Uh, but it's also worth noting, of course, and it's a point that I haven't put on the board here, that firms will pursue different objectives at different times. Okay, so they'll pursue different objectives at different times. Uh, I use the example of the PlayStation, uh, last time or games consoles more generally uh, and how sales maximization may be pursued there and even possibly a loss leader strategy uh, but at other times with the games console and the actual uh, sorry the, the, with the actual games and then the peripherals uh, they pursue a profit maximization strategy we see something very very similar with uh, of course uh, Kindle uh, tablets which are sold at a relatively low price and then the books which come at a, almost zero marginal cost in effect. Okay, um, so yeah, the books of course profit max. Right, so number three, what is the most important objective and for whom? So it really does depend on the different stakeholder group that you're actually assessing there, who is likely to be pursuing what objective and uh, why, okay? So uh, yeah, in this day and age, of course, with uh, the importance of social media and the fact that um, stories can become newsworthy so, so quickly, uh, it means that businesses really need to uh, behave themselves, okay? So that's another important consideration there, just in regard to uh, behavioral theories. Okay, number four, are PLCs encouraged to actually pursue short-run profit maximization because they have to engage in quarterly reporting to the markets. Okay, so public limited companies or PLCs are the largest type of company. They are the types of companies that of course float their shares on the stock market um, and the general public can actually buy and sell those shares. They then have a, responsib a responsibility to report to uh, the markets every three months how they've actually got on in terms of their trading. Now sometimes it's argued that actually that the quarterly reporting should be an annual reporting to allow firms to actually pursue a longer term focus on profit maximization. So is there a culture which actually encourages short 
short-term profit maximization and is that to the detriment of society okay uh, number five are the largest firms uh, too complicated to understand and to really attain profit maximization so are their cost structures just so so incredibly difficult to actually understand and so um, multiple in terms of the scale that you're looking at is it just too complex to actually pursue profit maximization or do they have a really good uh, handle on what's actually taking place perhaps one of the best examples to use that uh, certainly with regard to a more dynamic pricing mechanism is uber and the way they use price discrimination determining uh, which is determined by how many people are actually opening up the uber app at a given time the more people opening up that app it tells uh, Uber that there is more demand for taxis in a given area that gives them a lot of information as to whether they can increase the price uh, or whether the price should fall okay uh, so it, it really again does depend on the firm okay number six are all uh, super normal profits equal so um, are all super normal profits equal what does that mean well it really means if you're making a super normal profit because a firm is pursuing short-run profit maximization or even long-run profit maximization what are they actually using that, those super normal profits to do are they just actually redistributing to investors and shareholders and paying out dividends or are they actually using that money uh, as retained profit and reinvesting into research and development, into uh, new innovative products uh, and offerings uh, to really offer a social good to society in the longer term. Uh, okay, you know, there's huge amounts of benefit to uh, businesses in terms of actually undertaking uh, mergers and acquisitions as well. Just look at the platform you're watching this on now, of course, being YouTube. Google took over YouTube back in what 2006. Uh, they've helped grow that uh, that organisation, and of course, you're enjoying a social good right now. Okay, so yeah, there's all sorts of arguments here that super normal profits are not necessarily equal. Okay, guys, right. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Thanks a lot.